Okay, problem 12 needs us to FOIL this together, the square root of x plus 2 square roots of y times the quantity square root of x minus the square root of y. So I have this uh, problem written down here, and we'll have to FOIL this together. Okay, so the square root of x times a square root of x is the square root of x squared, which is x. Here we have the square root of x times a minus square root of y, which is a minus square root of xy. Now let's go to the inner. We have two square roots of y times the square root of x, which would be two square roots of xy plus two square roots of xy. And then two square roots of y times a minus y is minus two, okay? Positive two times a minus one right there is a, uh, minus 2, square root of y times the square root of y is the square root of y squared, which is y. Now you can combine the middle terms, and we got a minus 1 of these plus 2 of those will give us, well, 2 minus 1 is 1. So it'll be x plus 1 square root of xy minus 2y, and that's the answer is d. Okay, problem 13 uh, wants us to simplify this expression right here. Now the numerator is already factored for us, so I'll just rewrite that down. And the denominator, we'll need to factor that. Well typically a, you might see a quadratic that needs factored, like a x squared that would break into x and x. This is x to the fourth, so if it factors it will break into x squared and x squared. Uh, this here tells me that the signs are the same, both negative. Okay, so I need a minus and a minus. Now, factors of 225 that add up to uh, uh, 34, I think are 25 and 9. Uh, let's see, 25 times 9 is 225, and uh, 25 and 9 is 34. So it's 25 and 9. Now, on the top, we have that still that same stuff, x minus 3 x plus 5 squared, and on the bottom we have some difference of two squares. This is a difference of two squares that factors into x plus 5, x minus 5, and this is also a difference of two squares which factors into x plus 3, x minus 3. Crossing out some uh, like terms that divide to 0, uh, they cancel out. One of these cancel out with, uh, with this. And we're left with x plus 5 over x minus 5, x plus 3, which is answer D. Okay, question 14 says, uh, if the inverse sine of x equals pi, what is x? Well, yeah, this is a trig question, and this deals with a unit circle. And a unit circle has a radius of 1, and the circumference of that circle with a radius of 1 is 2 pi. So it's a distance of 2 pi from here clear around to here. So if it's a difference distance of 2 pi here, then it's a distance of 1 pi or pi right here. And the coordinate of that location is the coordinate negative 1 comma 0. When you think sine, think of the y value. So the y value there is 0. And that would be the answer to that problem, 0. Okay, let's go to 15. 15 says, if f of x equals x squared plus 2 for x squared than 0, what is f inverse of 4? Well, uh, the inverse function, when it, when it for the, this x value of 4, the original function will have an x, a y value of 4. So in other words, I just need to solve this for um, uh, when y or the f of x is equal to 4. So again, if I have a coordinate x, y on the original function, then the inverse function will have a coordinate y, uh, y, x. In other words, this is the y value of the original function. So just 4 equals x squared plus 2. Subtract 2 from both sides, you get 2 equals x squared. Take the square root of both sides, and you get x equals the square root of 2. And that's answer 15. And I'll need to get a clean sheet of paper to do the next problem. Okay, problem 15, 16 says the graph of the function f is symmetric about the x-axis. If f of 2 equals 3, which of the following must be true? Okay, well, let's take a look at what's going on here. Uh, symmetric about the axis, f of 2 equals 3. That means we have a point 
at uh, we have a point at the, the coordinates 2, 3. So over 2, up 3. Now, if it's symmetric about the x-axis, that's this axis, that means there will be a point exactly the same distance away on the opposite side of the x-axis. So that means that there will be a point at 2, negative 3. Or in function notation, we would say that f of 2 is equal to negative 3. And that would be the right answer. OK, uh, this problem, we need to simplify this. First thing I would recommend doing is to uh, factor any denominator. The top, we have minus 5 over x minus 2. That's the first fraction. And the second one, I'll rewrite this as being minus 10 over. This is a difference of two squares. We can write that as being x plus 2, x minus 2. Now, we need to get a common denominator here, and the common denominator is going to be x plus 2, x minus 2. So I'm going to write that down, x plus 2, x minus 2. And now we can just say to ourselves, what's in this common denominator that's not in this denominator? Well, an x plus 2. So I need to take a minus 5 times an x plus 2 minus 10 times, okay, what's that in this common denominator that's not in this denominator? There's nothing extra, so I don't need to put anything up there with a 10, or I could think 10 times 1. Now I just need to simplify this. Taking the minus 5 through, we get minus 5x minus 10. That's taking the 5 through, minus 10 more over that same denominator that I have right there. I'll just write denominator. And then combining like terms, I got minus 5x minus 10 minus 10 is minus 20 over that denominator. And I'll go ahead and write it out. Uh, that's that x plus 2. Well, I'll just write out that denominator. Now, you can look for this answer, and that won't be there because what they did is they factored out a common factor of uh, minus 5 on the top. And if we factor out a minus 5 on the numerator, that will leave us with x. Well, factor out a minus 5 from a minus 20. If you take minus 20 divided by minus 5, you get positive 4. You could check that by multiplying it back through. And then they foiled this together, the denominator. If you foil that together, that's your x squared minus 4. And nothing else simplifies after that. And that is answer B. OK, on this problem, it says uh, none of these are 0. Uh, what is the value of P here to make the left side equal to the right side? Well, go ahead and take this third power through. If we do that, negative 4 cubed is actually negative 64. x cubed cubed would be, multiply your exponents together, you get x to the ninth. This would be y cubed. And this would be z to the sixth. Multiply your exponents there. Now that times p is going to give me 64 x to the tenth, y to the twelfth, z to the fourteenth. Now what am I missing? OK, what does p need to be to give me this up here? Well, first of all, this is positive and this is negative. So the p is going to have to be negative. I know this much. It's negative. There's no extra number need to be multiplied by. Just multiply by negative 1, and I'll get the 64. I do need an extra x. Here's x to the ninth. Here's x to the tenth. So I do need an extra x. So one extra x there. And how many extra y's? Well, nine of them, right? 12 minus 3, nine more y's. And how many extra z's? Well, 14 minus 6 is 8, so that would be z to the 8th. And that would be the right answer to that problem, and that's answer D.